This is the favela, or slum, of Sao Hemo in Sao Paulo, where Caio Santos has grown up. The 18-year-old has seen changes over the years. The violence that once dogged the favela has fallen. Modern retailers have started to enter, and access to schools has improved. But Caio, like many young Brazilians, wants more. He is a member of the C-class, the new middle class, who now number half of Brazil's 200 million people. Although they have benefited from a stronger economy in recent years, they are dissatisfied with the poor quality of public services. They will be crucial to this year's presidential election, which kicks off on Sunday. Poderia ter um um percentual de crescimento muito maior do que já foi feito. Então é por isso que 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 eu creio que tem essa tipo de de cobrança da sociedade, principalmente das pessoas que têm uma classe menor de na sociedade, algumas se juntam para fazer protestos. This year's election is really a battle between two women from different parts of the Brazilian political spectrum. On the one hand, we have the incumbent president, Dilma Rousseff, of the Workers' Party, which has built over the past 12 years in Brazil a strong social welfare system. But in recent months, the economy has slipped into recession. On the other side is Marina Silva, a former environmentalist and senator, who for Brazilians represents a voice of change. Miss Silva entered the race suddenly in August after the tragic death of her running mate, Eduardo Campos. A former illiterate rubber tapper, her message is one of change and clean politics coupled with more orthodox economics. But she lacks the backing of a major party and in recent polls, President Rousseff has overtaken her for the first round on Sunday and in the likely second round runoff on October 26. During its 12 years in power, the PT has reduced unemployment to record lows, implemented wage rises and introduced extensive social welfare benefits. Poverty has declined. Benedito Furtado Giacchino, a mechanic in São Paulo's Jardim Colombo favela, says he will vote for the PT on Sunday. <laughs> Aí eu trabalho por conta, pelo menos foi o primeiro governo que deu certo para mim. Né? There is also a chance Miss Silva might not even make it through the first round if third-placed candidate Aécio Neves of the pro-business PSDB party strengthens his support. The PSDB is popular in Brazil's richer southeast, where it is seen as a better manager of the economy. Debra Homa Draza, a law student at the elite private university Mackenzie in Sao Paulo, sees the PT as a dictatorship led by former president Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva and wants the PSDB to win. I think that this, the actual government must leave because there are so many problems. We are in a kind of dictator, dictator uh, since Lula is in the power and so uh, Aécio is, uh, was the go uh, governor of uh, Minas Gerais and he did a lot, lot of change. Clearly this election is still too close to call. While Miss Rousseff is the favourite, much will depend on how young people from the new middle class, such as Caio from São Hemel, will vote. In the últimos years, só vem o PT, o PT, o PT, e não teve grandes mudanças. Pode ser que com a Marina tenha e a esperança do povo é essa, né? Torcer para uma grande mudança, como se ela entrar vai ser uma grande mudança. Voters such as Caio may be putting too much hope in Miss Silva's ability to change Brazil. She lacks strong backing in Congress and is likely to struggle to get reforms through. But he is right about one thing: Brazil's future hangs in the balance. More of the same will be bad for an economy that slipped into recession this year. Whichever president wins this month, change will be the order of the day. This is Joe Lay for the Financial Times in Sao Paulo.